Today, we are going to talk about oversizing. So on the surface, it would seem like having a 10 kilowatt of panels on your roof would mean that you need a 10 kilowatt inverter. That seems logical, but we often see that a 10 kilowatt of solar panels are connected to a lower rated inverter, say seven kilowatt inverter. That feels like a disaster waiting to happen. People ask, won't it fry my inverter to give me more power than it can handle? Would I be wasting all the extra power that my panels are producing? Or maybe you will void my warranty by doing this. So the short answer to all these questions is a simple no. And oversizing is actually a very smart thing to do for several reasons. Now, before we get to them, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video, not just yet, but after you watch this video and after you do find it very interesting. So, getting back to the video. So first we need to understand something about solar panels. And I hate to break this to you, but solar panels very rarely hit their rated power output. On any solar panel spec sheet, you will see two ratings, or you should. The most manufacturers are starting to show both. So the first one is standard testing condition, STC. And then the second one, the nominal module operating temperature or NMOT. And I do wish that they simply called it normal testing condition, NTC or something like that, but nevertheless. So STC rating are the ideal lap conditions under which a solar panel's performance is measured. STC assumes a temperature of 25 Celsius. We'll show that in Fahrenheit somewhere here and a radiance of 1,000 watts per square meter. This is kind of like the strength of the sun on a clear, sunny day around noon. And obviously, wind speed of 1 meters per second. Basically, it's a standardized way to measure and compare solar panel outputs under perfect conditions. NMOT is a more realistic measurement condition and it considers the average operating temperature of a solar panel when it's actually in use. So NMOT gives a better idea of how solar panel will actually perform under typical real world conditions, which is still not very, very clear as someone in Boston, Massachusetts will not get the same outputs as someone in let's say Galveston or Florida. But it gives us somewhat of, of an idea of what we can expect out of the panels that we get. So the main difference is that STC is like measuring a solar panel performance in a lab under ideal conditions. And then again, NMOT gives you the idea of, an, of what everyday performance in the real world would be. Manufacturers use the STC when they label the wattage of their panels because it's higher than NMOT. NMOT is usually around 25% lower than the standard testing condition. So a panel with a 400 watt SDC rating will usually have a normal rating of around 300 watts. It is possible for panels to actually hit their SDC power output and even sometimes exceed it on very rare occasions, but it's overall very infrequently, usually only a few days per year. So right off the bat, 10 kilowatts of panels, which would be about 25 SDC rated 400 watt panels, that would have a real world nomination of around 7.5 kilowatts of actual output. Now, the other thing to remember is that azimuth and tilt play heavily into oversizing as well. Just like I said, Boston's totally different than Florida. So say you had 10 kilowatts of panels with an tilt of about 90 degrees, right? So we're doing this and that those panels are due east. And then we have another 10 kilowatts of panels with the of 90 degree facing west. They're basically mounted perpendicular to the ground at that 90 degree level. So since these two groups of panels will never be producing their maximum at the same time, you could theoretically have a 20 kilowatts worth of panels connected to a 10 kilowatt inverter. Now, I know this is a little bit of an extreme example as nobody really would have panels set up like this, but I find that examples of extremes help people understand concepts better. Now, on the flip side, say you have 10 kilowatts worth of panels mounted on a dual axis solar tracker. Because of the significant increase in production from the tracker, you would be able or you would not be able to oversize it nearly as much. Now, you're probably asking, great. But what does this all mean for me? And I am very glad you asked 
telepathically <laughs> via the YouTube, YouTube website. So oversizing has several benefits. First, inverters operate more efficiently as they get closer to their maximum power. More efficiency means more production. Second, inverters generally turn on earlier in the day and keep working later in the day, also getting you more production. Inverters have a startup and shutdown voltage. Panels need to hit a certain voltage in the morning before they will actually turn on. And with an oversized array, the inverter will get to that startup voltage earlier and then at the end of the day, it will stay on longer, giving you what? <laughs> more production. <laughs> now. Third, it will save you money on the inverter as well. So you can use a lower capacity inverter and still get great output. Fourth, so overall more production. We have seen the graphs that show solar production during the day and oversizing widens the curve, which you guessed it, increases the overall production. And lastly, you just get more production on cloudy days as well. Now this is all great, but as I said earlier, there will be times when panel output exceeds the inverter's capabilities. And when this happens, this is called clipping. And clipping does not damage anything and will not void any warranties. So you can tell your solar installation is clipping basically when you see your flat, when you see that flat part of the production curve, usually during the middle of the day. Inverters are built with clipping in mind. So for example, a 7.7 .7 kilowatt Sunny Boy string inverter can actually handle a maximum input of 12,320 watts, so 12.3 kilowatts, even though it can only output 7.7 .7 kilowatts. An Enphase IQ8 Plus microinverter can theoretically have up to 440 watt panels of input, even though it can only output 290 watts. On average, with a south-facing system, oversizing is generally around 110 to 120%. But if you have east or west-facing system, you can usually do about 150% of oversizing. And there are numerous factors and calculations that go into the amount of oversizing. Make sure to get an installer with years of experience as there is both a science and an art to oversizing. So while you will lose any excess power when clipping happens, your overall yearly gain in production is more than makes up for the tiny bit of loss that you will experience only a few days per year. All in all, oversizing makes perfect sense and I do it to some degree with every installation that I do. Now you can help me oversize my channel by liking and subscribing to this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.